Okay, so my collection of rare or non-UK Raspberry Pis has got a bit bigger, and that's because the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, uh, which is this model, is the Brazilian version. Everybody else who's got these all around the world has the standard green color like my Raspberry Pi 5 here, uh, but Brazil had a unique model which was only for their market, not to be sold in any of the other markets. And uh, I'd never seen one of these out in the wild before, but I saw this on eBay and it was listed in Ireland and I got it for a pretty good price. The packaging wasn't the greatest. It came wrapped like this, uh, just in like a, an Amazon cardboard envelope and uh, it had an anti-static bag around it, but no other padding at all. But it is in really good condition. It's nice and shiny, it's lovely and clean and uh, it does work absolutely fine. So these two red Raspberry Pis are from China, thanks to Geekworm for sending me those. I've got a separate video on those, and I've got a separate video of this one on the left as well, because it is a bit unusual in the, the way that it's made up. Uh, I've also got a separate video on the blue Raspberry Pi, which is my prize one, really. This is the limited edition box set Raspberry Pi, which came with a certificate of authenticity from Eben Upton. Uh, you can see from 2013 there, and it's all numbered. And if we have a look at my views on the channel, so from the 6th of February 2007, I guess that's when I started my channel, to 23rd of July 2024, my most views have come from the United States, uh, the UK is next, then India, Germany, Canada, Australia, France, Netherlands, Italy, and Brazil. And there's obviously loads of other countries on there, but uh, they're smaller numbers than that. I think you can see on a desktop uh, all the other countries that show up. But yeah, let's have a look at this on the Raspberry Pi website because there's a little write-up about it. And of course, to view this, we need to be looking at it on the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. Uh, you can see it's currently using between 2 and 3 watts of power at the moment. These little USB-C to micro adapters are really handy. I use it for all of my older devices, currently running from an SD card, but the Pi 3B Plus does run from USB. I'm going to um, do some videos on the 3B Plus and play around with some operating systems, not necessarily in this one, um, but I'm going to play around with a bit of RetroPie and uh, just see how well I can get Raspberry Pi OS running. So you can see here, brand new and blue from the Raspberry Pi News section. So let's click on that. And we can see 15th of November 2017. So our approved reseller program is live in Brazil with Anatel approved Raspberry Pis in a rather delicious shade of blue on sale from today. I was worried that it was going to be a bad photo on eBay and it was actually going to be a green one. There was a time when Amazon actually had the 3B Plus advertised. When the 4 came out, the 3B Plus picture they used to use was this colour, uh, but they didn't have them. They had the green ones, but they were just using the wrong picture, I believe. So the difficulty in buying our products and the lack of Anatel certification have been consistent points of feedback from our many Brazilian customers and followers. In much the same way that electrical products in the USA must be FCC approved, products sold in Brazil must be proved by Anatel. And they partnered with Philippe Flop in Brazil to sell the Raspberry Pi 3s. So the blue colouring of the Raspberry Pi 3 sold in Brazil is the only difference between it and the standard green model. People outside Brazil will not be able to purchase the blue variant from Philippe Flop and they're asking people in Brazil to share their projects. And with the comments, there's some things about pricing in here. They weren't that cheap. So you can see here, $60 plus shipping of 15. It's great that we have all these archives of Raspberry Pi news and all the comments and everything. It's really handy to go back to. Uh, if we go back a page, you might have noticed this picture. And this is a cool picture. And uh, I left that bit in real time. It was actually quite fast. Uh, so, can I view this bigger? Yeah, it looks like it. So you can see from this, obviously, pretty much everything is in green, apart from the Brazilian, the blue, and the two Chinese ones. Although these aren't the two Chinese ones I have. I don't have this one, uh, which actually was a 3B from China. That's interesting. And they mention a Japanese one, which looks pretty similar. But they definitely stand out when you see them in these different colors. Now let's have a look at NeoFetch. So let's minimize the web browser. Let's keep it going. Uh, so control T to open a terminal and sudo at install NeoFetch. I'll leave this in real time, see what it works like. Because I can't remember which version of Raspberry Pi OS. It's the latest version uh, and something's wrong. I've got 
I've got internet on it. Is it that I haven't run an update yet? Oh, okay, I've already got NeoFetch on there. Let's do an update anyway. sudo apt update. I'm probably better off to do the upgrade um, without a graphical user interface. Is it Alt F4 quits you out? No. Alt F1. Control Alt F1. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so let's do that again just to show how much quicker it works without a graphical user interface. It should zip through it quite reasonably well. Oh, still not super fast. Uh, this is only one gig of RAM, or I believe it's one gig of RAM. Oh yeah, it's pretty slow. So let's upgrade. I'll cut a few bits out. You don't want to see all <laughs> how slow it really is. So we're getting a new Chromium browser. At least when it's slow like this, you can see what it's updating rather than it just whiz past and you don't know what's there. Although in KDE Plasma, you can check it all and you can even go to the link which mentions the update and tells you about it and things like that, which I find really handy. Oh yeah, it is, it is slow, look. So 9% and doesn't seem to be moving much. And the original Raspberry Pis are incredibly slow on some of these things. But that said, you get something like RetroPie on there and, uh, you know, get a nice fast game and everything and it runs incredibly fast. So it just depends what you're running on it. It does appear to be stuck, but I guess it's probably going to be all right. I'm going to go away and come back. And then all of a sudden I just stopped recording and all of a sudden it just whipped through the last bit. So it all seemed, the Chrome browser seemed to be taking ages. Right, so we run here, fetch. And then we can have a look. It's running Bookworm, 64-bit. Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus Revision 1.3, Kernel 6.6.31, and we have a gig of RAM, and currently the CPU is running at 1.4 gig. I've never had a 3B Plus before, so I need to have a look at some old videos and see what people were overclocking them to. I might as well overclock it and have a little play around, especially for the gaming side of it. And also trying to get a web browser. I did get reasonable performance on a Pi Zero 2W, with lots of tweaks. Right, so let's go back into the desktop environment with Start X. It's a shame we didn't have Twister OS for the Pi 3B Plus. I thought we did, so I was gonna try and download that because that still works brilliantly on a Pi 4B. Doesn't get any updates, but it still works brilliant. So let's do Raspi Config. Oh, it is slow. And I haven't used ZRAM or anything like that yet. But also it is running from an SD card and I'm not used to running from an SD card that much now. So sudo raspi-config. So advanced options. It's whether or not the new lab WC would be better. Let's give it a try. So this will reboot. Yeah, that's restarting. Okay, maybe I should do some tests to see if one is faster than the other. Obviously this part tends to be all right, although it's struggling getting to help and preferences. Yeah, it's not, when you hover over it, you'd usually expect it to go up. I find if you use the keys though, uh, it tends to be more responsive than hovering the mouse over it. Actually, does the speed test work? Yeah, we've got diagnostics on here. So let's run the test. I'll have no doubt done this test on a Raspberry Pi 4B, so I might be able to compare some results. Oh, it's gonna be slow. Is it gonna fail even? Of course, I don't know the state of this SanDisk uh, SD card that I've got in there. It came with it, uh, and it wrote the operating system, and it seemed to be working all right. But this is, this is very slow for an SD card speed test. Oh, it is a pass though. So show log. I have clicked on it, there we go. So sequential 15, 693, 695, 500, 1986. Yeah, it's only just, but it does do it. Right, let's reset and run that again. Okay, so third test. The first two were pretty similar. And I always take the one with the best random read speed, which is 1986, 1987, 1986. Okay, it's all very similar. So let's delete those 
two. All the things like text and stuff obviously works because it's super easy for a computer. And files and things like that are pretty good as well. And let's have a look and see if I've got a Pi 4B test on the same type of card. I was just about to press the Chrome browser again because it wasn't launching, but it was launching. <laughs> it's just slow. We don't need to restore the page. So let's go to YouTube. Let's leave this bit in real time, see what it does. Just a DuckDuckGo search. I generally end up changing this to, to Google because I do prefer its search. Right, YouTube. And this is still in real time. It's not, it's not terrible. It's not going to be good at playing video. Uh, that's definitely for sure. Okay, I definitely had to cut a bit out there. And the mouse is actually pretty slow. Seems to have come to a grinding halt. I've been waiting a while. The mouse is not working. Okay, so it's been a while. Uh, I was tempted to carry on with the uh, Pi Zero 2W, but what I think I might do is install the Puffin browser on here and just see if that's enough just to do... I don't want to give up on the Pi 3B uh, on this part of the video. As I say, I'm going to be trying other operating systems and things like RetroPi, which would be absolutely fine. Uh, but yeah, I'm not going to use my Pi Zero 2W just yet. Yeah, let's, so let's turn that off. So just clicked on Chrome again, and it's crashed on Chrome again. So let's switch that off. And I think I'm going to use uh, this to write an operating system to an SSD drive, because that's going to be faster. I think we are still looking at USB 2 speeds. But um, it's still going to be a lot faster than an SD card. So I've got a 60 gig UCAN drive and a Ugreen cable. Let's plug that into USB and it's lit up. I've got a low voltage warning, uh, so that means that the USB is taking a bit too much power, but we'll go with that anyway. So choose device, Raspberry Pi 3, choose OS. I'm tempted to use the 32-bit version because it definitely used to work better. Yeah, I'm going with that. Choose storage, SSD drive. I won't bother putting any settings in, and yes. See, this works all right, that was quite quick. And what password has this got? Yeah, that one. Okay, so now we're talking, the SSD feels completely different. Uh, it really doesn't feel like the same computer at all. And uh, that's kind of reflected in here. So what have we got? So random read speed, 2290, 22572. So the First one is the best one, but also if you look at sequential write speed where 20,000 faster on all of them pretty much, random write speed goes from 633 to 3,112 and uh, random read speed goes from 1987 to 2257, which on the random read speed isn't that great a jump, but it, it just feels completely different. So let's say that 22901. And just to show you, if I click on here, before when I was doing this, it wasn't populating it. But if I just drag it over it, it is pretty much instant. And it's finding it with no problem at all. So really, really responsive. I haven't tried Chrome yet. This could be where it all goes, uh, all falls apart. And I could also run a lower desktop resolution. Let's try this first. Uh, so Raspberry Pi specs. I mentioned earlier on, is it USB 2? I'm pretty sure it is USB 2. Okay, so the browser's not crashed yet. Actually, I need to put 3B plus, don't I? So 3B, I think it's a plus. Yeah, it is a plus. Okay, so the browser's still slow, but
but it is definitely way better. I'm not going to open a PDF just in case with this level of RAM. So Raspberry Pi 3 Model B Plus, 1.4 gigahertz quad core. Yeah, four USB 2 ports. So that's the limitation for speed. So there's not really any point in going for faster storage than this. So let's go to YouTube and I'll go to my channel. And the other one crashed on the saving your choice. This has worked. So it is taking us to YouTube. Oh, it hasn't got this sand disk in it. Has that one got it in? Why have I not tested this particular sand disk card on a Pi 4? Maybe I never had a new one. Okay, let's go with this one. And so, if I pause it, just minimize that a bit. Whoa. Right, so I've got the tests here, and if I scroll down, so the Kioxia 32 was a pretty inexpensive card, and we've got 15,456. Squinch write speeds faster on the Pi 3B. Uh, random write speed 1369633, so more than double the random write speed, and random read speed 3142 uh, versus 1987. Interestingly, the random read speed on the SD card slot on the Raspberry Pi 4 is performing faster than the SSD drive on my Pi 3B Plus. And when you bring SSDs into it, way, way faster on the Pi 4 because it's got USB 3. But this little lift has been enough to be able to make it basically run a lot better and be more usable. So I'm definitely going to do another video on this. Interestingly, I didn't get the power error again even when i plugged an sd card in uh, and was using this drive i guess when i was running the operating system from the sd card and then i plugged the drive in maybe i know it's a ssd but the startup of the drive uh, maybe uses a bit more power and that kind of shocked the pine to thinking it was using too much power when it really wasn't um, but uh, i'm going to try it on samsung bars which are pretty fast USB sticks, which I think will be a really good suitor for the Pi 3B Plus. Uh, I'm not going to really do much more in SD cards. I'll probably run RetroPie from it um, and uh, maybe one of the RetroPie builds. Uh, not sure what to do. Uh, I think there's an Android build, a Constacang Android build for Pi 3B Plus. But yeah, in another video, I'll just do some more testing uh, and I'm going to revisit the Pi Zero 2W at some point. But at the moment, the, the next or one of the next videos will be on this and different operating systems. And also maybe one optimizing Raspberry Pi OS because uh, I can already drop the resolution, change the web browser, uh, do a few more things and get this working uh, to a, at least a reasonable level. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.